Welcome to the shooting show. Stand by for shots fired. Hello, I'm Johnny Rowland, your host of the shooting show, and welcome to today's program. I'm so glad to have you. We're out here on such a pretty day, a good day to be out shooting. Of course, uh, just about any time is good to be out shooting. We do want to thank everyone for being with us. You know, our message is so important that we have as normal Americans who happen to enjoy firearms of all types, and we want the rest of America to know just how we are in fact. So uh, that's something fortunately our shooting show is gaining on every week as we reach more people all over this country. Well, let's start today's program with, uh, this is a transitional model Smith & Wesson. It's a Hunter Classic. It happens to be in stainless steel. The good folks at Britain's have, have loaned this. That's what's so neat about a gun shop like Britain's. You don't know what they're gonna get next. So uh, that is certainly fun. We have some of the great Corbin 340 grain, 44 Magnum ammunition. Yes, I did say that right. 300, not 200, 340 grain, 44 Magnum ammunition. Uh, one of our viewers called oh, a week or so ago and asked what uh, he was going to Alaska, I believe, and uh, wanted to do some fishing, but he wanted to carry a handgun along uh, in case of a bear attack. Well, most handguns are not my idea of a good time when going after bear, but uh, the 340 grain Corbine would be an excellent choice, probably the best choice I know of uh, if you had to defend yourself against a, uh, an animal as large as one of the great bears, uh, certainly. Peter told us uh, that someone had taken uh, one of these uh, 44 Magnum to Africa and had uh, shot through an elephant's skull with one of these uh, uh, hard cast J.D. Jones bullets in this uh, uh, great 44 Magnum loading. So let's see what it does to a steel plate down here at 100 yards. <laughs> Notice how I just sort of turned it over and over there at time or two. Well, friends, I'm holding a couple of very similar pistols made by different manufacturers, but we have a Smith & Wesson Sigma in 40 caliber and a Glock Model 22, also in 40 caliber. Now, friends, I tell you what, this is about as close, I guess, as, as two handguns can, can get as the uh, goal they attempt to accomplish. The Glock, of course, was first and really broke some new ground for, for handguns in general. Well, you know, Glock had an advertisement saying someday all handguns will be made this good. <laughs> well, apparently Smith & Wesson took them at their word and sort of built their own version. Uh, now, the two guns are certainly different enough. In fact, uh, they are suing each other over these two particular guns, <laughs> even as we speak. But I'm sure the lawyers will work it out. Uh, anyway, uh, there are certainly some differences. Uh, the Sigma has uh, uh, compared to the Glock, even though they are very, very similar in concept. Smith & Wesson has a number of patents pending, and they've been granted a number of patents on different features on their Sigma. So uh, really, it's uh, sort of the, uh, certainly the, the end product is very similar. Both of these guns have polymer frames. They're arranged very, very similar. In fact, at a distance of, oh, back a few feet, uh, you're gonna have to look close to tell which one is which. But in fact, they are different. We were running some tests yesterday, which we'll repeat uh, in a few minutes. Uh, they're more similar than I think most of us would believe. Well, let's take a look. A lot of us are familiar with the Glock and uh, made in Austria. Let's take a look at the Glock in my hands and recall. See, it's not terribly bad as far as recall goes. Uh, it is light. It is very, very essential that you have a locked wrist when you're shooting one of these polymer frame guns because if, uh, if you break your wrist or let it, or let it uh, uh, be relaxed or loose, if it's not firm, the gun has to have something for the slide to work against. It, it's got to have a firm foundation. Now then, your elbows, like Jerry Mitchell told us, do not necessarily have to be locked. Your elbows can, can become shock absorbers, essentially. But that locked wrist is really, really important on these polymer frame guns. Steel frame guns like the 45 Colt, a government model we're uh, pretty much used to, a lot of us are, are not nearly as critical. It's even important on these, on any semi-automatic handgun, that locked wrist is very, very important. 
Now then, let's shoot the Sigma shooting the same ammunition. Remember, pull that slide back and let it go. <laughs> An empty in my hair there. Uh, uh, that's why uh, the ladies, if you go out shooting, uh, this is very important. You should, when you're shooting a semi-automatic pistol, and just a little range tip here, be sure and wear some sort of t-shirt because some of these empties can come back and you darn sure wouldn't. It's just not fun having one down the front of your shirt there. So uh, I would certainly suggest if you're shooting an automatic, uh, semi-automatic pistol out on the range, just a little helpful hint here. Uh, I would certainly suggest wearing a t-shirt, something with a closed top, because uh, if, certainly if you're not, if you're shooting for the first time or if you're not very familiar with handguns, uh, believe me, that would be quite a start if, if you had a uh, empty and hot cartridge case come back and get down your shirt. No, it wouldn't burn you too bad, but it would uh, surprise the heck out of you. So we just don't want uh, any accident or anything like that to happen. So just a little helpful hint there. Anyway, both of these guns, I suppose the idea was to take the best attributes of a semi-automatic, and incidentally both of these have 15 round magazines, they're pre-banned guns. Uh, today, all you can get on the uh, latest editions of these would be a 10 round magazine. And as we've spoken many times on the, on the show before, the 40 caliber is an attempt to approximate the 45 ACP. It is not the same thing, but the 40 is a good caliber in its own right. Typically, both these guns will shoot into three or four inches at 25 yards, which is about average uh, for most semi-automatic pistols. Now then, you may hunt around and find a particular load that either one of these guns really does like, and they may perform better than that. Uh, the Sigma has in particular been extremely accurate with certain loads. This has been the most accurate 40 that we've had come through here. But on average, and the, for the average shooter out there, uh, especially with the longer triggers this particular Glock has a five and a half pound trigger the Sigma has a ten or ten and a half pound trigger and there's a reason for it. Smith & Wesson could have made it lighter but what they're trying to do is get around product liability cases by uh, in fact uh, Glock offers what they call a New York trigger which makes it considerably has a considerably harder pull and what they want to do is approximate the uh, poundage pull on a double action revolver so you're going to be real sure where you're not going to have your finger, let's say a police officer had his finger resting on the trigger, having someone uh, uh, at bay here or holding someone, and let's suppose he got nervous or something moved around him and he pulled the trigger. If your finger's on that trigger, look, you know, it's going to go bang. So what we have to do, one, is if we're not going to shoot the gun, we need to take our finger off that trigger, but the harder triggers will make an accident like that or an incident less likely to occur. And this is what they have in mind. These guns do not have manual safeties. They both have a little trigger type safety that will just keep the trigger from being uh, inadvertently uh, or unintentionally pulled. But uh, they are safe guns. They have a uh, firing pin block. Neither one of them are really at cock. They're sort of at half cock in the uh, uh, the striker there is is at a partial cock. The trigger continues cocking the striker. They don't really have hammers, they have strikers. And uh, once it gets to a certain point there in the trigger travel, then it will let go and then of course the striker is free to travel forward, hit the primer and fire the, the gun. So what we have here, and uh, these guns are very popular with police departments, a lot of whom have been carrying the revolver because they operate in a sense like a revolver. You pull the trigger, there's nothing, there's no safety to take off or put on. It's just point and pull the trigger. If you release the trigger, then the gun is safe again. There's no, uh, there's not as great a likelihood of an accident such as on a double action semi-automatic uh, type action, which I really don't like them. Uh, make some nice guns, double action semi-automatics. I don't like them, I don't like the concept. Because what happens is we've said before, Police officer take the gun out, shoot it, forget to decock it, put it back in his holster, the gun's in single action mode, and it will fire and sometimes shoot the police officer in the leg. We just don't want that happening. Also, when you decock a double action semi-automatic gun, please, please, please point it in a safe direction because the decocker is just a mechanical device. We never want these guns to be at a potential to fire, whether you're letting the hammer down on one manually or if you're decocking, 
point it in a safe direction to do that because there are instances where uh, police officers have said they were decocking their guns while they were holding uh, the gun on someone and they shot them and they're blaming it on the decock. Well, I don't know, it could be, but we just don't trust a mechanical device to have the gun in a may fire or certainly taking it out of fire position. So please, when you decock a gun, well, for that matter, we never point the firearm at something we cannot afford to lose. We just don't do it. In a situation of self-defense, don't decock one of these things when, uh, you, when you're holding someone at gunpoint. Uh, on a 1911, certainly take your finger off the trigger. You can apply your thumb safety if you have to hold someone at gunpoint. But don't keep your finger on that trigger because you don't want these short trigger pulls. You don't want to shoot uh, someone uh, without uh, absolutely having to defend your life. So anyway, what they had in mind was to make a revolver type action or mechanism so it would be familiar to the police officer and yet have uh, up to a 15 round capacity. Well, as you folks know, I'm not that so. I think the revolver is about as good a self-defense uh, handgun as can be had, but if you're willing to learn to work with the semi-automatics, uh, both of these are good guns, and one of their strong points is simplicity, absolutely. Now, friends, you can tell these are really similar guns. I personally prefer the grip on the a Sigma because it has a grip angle similar to the 1911, whereas the Glock, to me, is a little blockier. You can see where the Sigma is rounded on the back and the Glock is a little blockier. However, some people really do like the Glock. Now, here is your slide release on the Glock. Here it is on your Smith & Wesson Sigma. Here are the takedown levers. And they're so, so similar, but uh, uh, different in their own rights. They have a different feel to them. Now then, friends, on the Smith & Wesson, it has a steel magazine, uh, which I uh, like. It comes out, uh, whether it's loaded or empty, it will fall out of the gun. Of course, to shoot the gun, pull the slide all the way to the rear, let it go, and line up those dots in that sight there. Let's see what it looks like. Yes, very simple. Take your finger off the trigger, and now the gun is safe. Now then, here, of course, is the Glock, and Glock really made polymer technology, I guess, popular for, certainly for handgun frames, but now, typically on the Glock, the magazines do not fall free. They have to be pulled out. Now, this is desirable for some situations, but uh, it's just another rendition. The magazines are plastic on the Glock. Remember, these are both pre-band guns. Uh, it's very, very similar to the Smith, except in the way it feels. Pull that slide all the way to the rear. Again, we have another plate set up out there. And let's take our shot, we'll line our, our dot there in the notch, and see what happens. Stay tuned for more of the shooting show after these important messages. You know, friends, it's rare in any field of manufacture that one particular company has a clear cut advantage over the others. Well, in this case, it's Corbon Ammunition, Corbon Bullet Company because they make the best handgun, long gun, and even some specialty caliber ammunition that's been real hard to get in the past. If you really want your handgun or rifle to perform at their absolute best, you need to find some Corbon ammunition. For information on where you can get Corbon, information on their product line, call them. Corbon Bullet Company, 1-800-626-7266. Again, give them a call. It's a free call. 1-800-626-7266. Trust me on this one. Corbon is the best there is. The shooting Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
Shooter ready. Stand by. Oh. How much? 1041. 1041. Not a bad time, yeah, sir. Sure is, Johnny. I tell you what, the time definitely has improved. Looks like the accuracy is a little bit lacking, <laughs> but you, you'll get better. I tell you what, I it really needs like to I'm improve. Impressed with what you, you, well, you, thank you. What, what's the difference, you think? Well, I know what the difference is. All right, tell folks. We are, in fact, you know, Jerry. I'm 45 years old. Yeah. I don't think I ever felt this good. I'm talking when I was 25. I don't know. I, I I don't think I ever felt this good. That's tremendous. Due to our health program, friends, this is the greatest thing. This is probably one of the absolute best pieces of information that we have given out since our show's been on the air. I agree. This is real. You know, Jerry, it's so important for these firearms to perform properly. They have to be fed proper ammunition. Guns no good without good ammunition. We talk about the great Corban make the guns perform so much better. This shotgun is no good without good ammunition, this handgun either. And friends, our body, our physical body is the same thing. The reason I'm so excited, when Jerry told me about this a while back, and I noticed Jerry lost quite a bit of weight and looks, you know, looks to be very healthy and all that, but you know, I've always been healthy and I hadn't really thought much about it. Well friends, I didn't know. <laughs> Uh, Jerry, Jerry laughs at me about this because I didn't know how good I could in fact feel. That's right. Now friends, let me tell you what now, if you're tired of sitting around the house, if you're tired, supposedly 60% of the American population is overweight. And the problem is so many people would like to exercise, but Jerry, they don't feel like exercise. That's right. Well, hey, let me tell you what, <clears throat> my situation here is improving a little bit and it's going to get a lot better because I feel so much better. That's right. You had a, a couple of things you wanted to tell us. Well, I was real excited about the weight part of it. Uh, I personally, since I've been on the program, I weighed 235 when, when I started this program, and I weigh 190 pounds now. I feel 20, 30 years younger, and you can just imagine all the benefits of feeling 20 or 30 years younger. And we don't, we, we're not doctors, and we don't make any health claim, medical claims, but just race your mind back. 20, 30 years, and imagine what you could do back then that you can't do now. Well, how many times have we heard people say, if I only knew then what I know now? Well, friends, we're going to give you another shot. Move it back. We're going to move the clock back physically. It is, hey, you know what? And the guarantee is, if you don't believe it, if you don't feel better, you really need to give it a 30-day, a, a, 30 day, a month a month trial That's so right. you really give yourself a chance. I tell you what, I felt it within a week of when in a few most days. Folks, most folks do. They, they, they begin to say, well, you know, I, I think I feel different. And then all of a sudden they start saying, boy, I'm feeling good. And then they start saying, hey, this is tremendous. Don't stay with it two or three months or you, you'll be dangerous. You'll get so <laughs> feeling so good it's not even funny. Hey, friends, this is no lie. Now, yeah. those of you who, who've been watching our program for a long time know that if it's not true, if I don't know this to be true or believe this with well, everything that I, I'm not going to tell you about it. Yeah. And friends, this is one of the best things that we have ever discovered. Uh, we had somebody I talked to, a biochemist earlier, and he and I were talking about the, the benefits of this situation. Incidentally, he does not work for the company. He's an independent biochemist. And he was saying, well, Johnny said, you found the fountain of youth. I mean, that's what he That's what a biochemist, an independent biochemist said. It has nothing to do with They didn't even know about us before. Didn't even know. He just and then knew he about said, the principle. And then he asked me, what company, what company is this with? I said, well, you know, and I began to tell him about our, our health program. A hundred percent money back guarantee if you don't feel better. Yeah. And please, when you call our operators, please leave your phone number and your address so we can send you some stuff. But you will personally be contacted by Jerry or one of his staff. And we're doing pretty good, actually. We're doing on, a good on, job. On the numbers of people that have called. Considering them who, who all yes. have called, it's been unreal. So let me add one other footnote. Sure. These are not diet uh, pills or something. No, they're what not. What it does mm -hmm. is it gives your body what it's looking for, and therefore you don't feel these stronger cravings to eat the junk food, the That's fatty true. foods, and you do feel so much better that, that when you, you want to exercise, and when you do exercise, you have more energy. And so that it all works together as, as a system. That's, that's really two friends. 1-800-895-7916, Shoot and Show Health Club. 
possibly, I, I can't overemphasize this. I mean, what can you do if you feel like it? You know, you feel like riding that bicycle, or you feel like going to work, or you feel like making those calls, or whatever else. You feel like spending more time with your family. You're gonna, you're gonna be a better father or mother. You're gonna be a better citizen, for that matter. We need all the good citizens, patriotic people we can get. That's right. Because yeah. friends, there's so much to be done. That's right. It is good. Friends, for information on the Shoot and Show Health Club, give us a call 1-800-895-7916. Leave your phone number, your address. We'll have someone get back to you immediately. Again, the Shoot and Show Health Club, 1-800-895-7916. Friends, let's do it today. Friends, what we're going to do is run a brief comparison here and just see what it looks like. We have three targets here set up out of a few yards. So let's go for hits here. Uh, with, let's start with the Sigma first. We have our Pro Timer on. It'll start me. Let's take a look for three shots. Okay, we have all, all good hits. That took 1.46 seconds. All right, let's, uh, let's exchange our Sigma. For our Glock, and I'm starting with my finger off the trigger in the low ready position. 1.46 seconds, we have hits, okay? Eep. 1.44 seconds, although one of my hits here was just a little bit outside the circle. Well, so we're talking about roughly the same amount of time now then, friends, to get an idea, remember the 40 is supposed to approximate a 1911. Let's take this 100% stock 1911 from Springfield Armory, 45 ACP. Let's do the same drill. Safety on, finger off the trigger. Three shots out here at a few yards. Remember, we're looking at 1.44, 46 seconds, one point uh, less than a second and a half. Let's see uh, how we do with the standard 1911 because... Uh, uh, of course, the 1911, as far as I'm concerned, and most other people, is the high watermark period of semi-automatic pistol development to this point. So let's compare our two plastic fantastics here to the 1911. Same drill. Okay, and we have all good hits. Uh, 1.21 second. Now, probably, I uh, realize I picked up a couple of uh, tenths of a second, probably due to, uh, since the lighter guns have a little more uh, muzzle flip, it was, I had to wait a little bit longer to get down on the target. You know, because I'm certainly making an effort with all three of these guns to shoot as well as I can, certainly for you folks at home. And so that's interesting. Realize again that <clears throat> we just have, with the plastic guns, we just have a different concept and uh, one that I think that uh, some of the police departments think that maybe their uh, people will not function well when taught about a semi-automatic because the semi-automatics do take more instruction than the revolvers. And some of them may see the uh, simpler semi-automatics with no safety, no nothing like that, uh, to be sort of a stopgap type uh, move. Well, I don't agree. Certainly, you need to spend as much time on these two plastic frame automatics uh, from Smith and from Glock as you would on any other semi-automatic. Now then friends, let's try one more drill here. Let's go ahead and try a double tap. We're going to put two shots on each target out here to, at a few yards and let's see what it looks like with that. We're going to start off with our, with our Sigma. And we have all good hits and 1.94 seconds. So yeah, we're all in the circle. So uh, I do want to compliment the good folks at Smith & Wesson. These uh, Sigma guns have been very, very reliable. Yeah, the ones we have seen, and this is our longer term test gun, and it's been very reliable, which of course in any semi-automatic is a very important attribute. Okay, 1.94 seconds. Let's try the Glock, same drill. Finger off the trigger, low ready position. Okay, uh, 
I had some hits out 1.86 seconds, but again, I was adjusting to that grip angle. So I've got one hit on a right target up here out of the circle, and my last target, again, I was out of the circle. Now then, this gun tends to shoot a little bit high because I'm more used to the 1911 grip angle, but we had a little better time, but our score was not as good. So uh, anyway, let's drop back to our control model, the 1911. One point eighty six seconds, but not all uh, our hits were good. We had two out in fact. Okay, let's try our, our government model forty five from Springfield Army. One hundred percent stock. See what happens. Safety on, low ready position, finger off the trigger. Okay. 1.72 seconds and we have all good hits. Two, one, two, one, and two. All good hits. So again, uh, maybe the steel frame, maybe the shorter trigger pull of the 1911. But what the point I'm trying to make here is uh, we have some certainly space age technology, which is all great. And I think what uh, the manufacturers here are trying to do is just have a simpler gun, maybe that won't require as much training. Well, I don't agree with that. I think you need uh, certainly at least as much training on a Glock as on a 1911 or on a Sigma as on a 1911. Uh, there are no shortcuts for training. There are no shortcuts for getting out here and learning to shoot your gun. There are none. Uh, certainly, you have to work on the Glock remembering or maintaining that stiff or locked wrist because if you break that wrist over if it's not locked these guns will not function now the uh, semi the uh, steel frame 1911s are much more forgiving but even them uh, if you don't have some sort of platform for that slide to work on that's solid is simply not going to function well friends we showed you two very similar concepts from different companies uh, Glock has certainly made a reputation. These are very durable guns. Still, I don't care what semi-automatic you're talking about, when you buy one of these guns, you're going to have to invest in about 200 rounds of ammunition and go out and shoot the gun, let it break in. Even these, even the plastic frame guns, they still need some break-in time. My good friend J.D. Jones says 500 is a better figure than 200. But friends, a minimum of 200 rounds through these guns, one, so you can find out how they work, how they recoil, uh, but also to let the gun, let its different surfaces mate to each other. This is so important because, you know, uh, this might be the gun that protects your own life or someone in your family's lives. Uh, and these are things that we cannot take lightly. We have to consider the necessary amount of training and maintenance and certain consideration that these guns deserve. More and more often, women are faced with protecting themselves and their homes. But another way of protection is through information. And we at the Shoot and Show believe that the new American magazine has the best information that you can possibly get. You can get the new American by calling 1-800-727-TRUE. And those numbers, of course, are 1-800-727-8783. The New American, $22 for a six-month subscription. It comes twice a month. Friends, you need this magazine if you want to know what's going on. And in times like this, we need both of these. We need our guns, and we darn sure need our information. The Shoot and Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station.
Fill up the Uniclip with your ammo, and each Uniclip holds 30 rounds and can be used over and over. You get three Uniclips with your rapid loader. You can load a 30-round magazine in about three seconds. The price of the C3 rapid loader is only $39.95 plus $4 shipping and handling, Visa or MasterCard accepted. To see if the C3 system will fit your gun, call Bobby or Al at 1-800-SAVE-YOU-GUN. That's our 800 number, 1-800-728-8486. Friends, this is a shoot and show info moment. How about that? Our good friend Jerry Michelik set a new record at Second Chance a couple of weeks ago up in Michigan, and we're so pleased for him. Jerry, of course, is one of the best shooters uh, in the world today and also a good friend of ours, and a lot of people have really become interested in him after seeing him uh, on our program. Also, uh, if you would like, if you can vote, you'd like to nominate the judge for uh, the board of the NRA, you can do so by... Uh, sending in his name, Leroy Scott, 2620 Centenary in Shreveport, Louisiana. So if you got your pencil handy, again, that's Leroy Scott, 2620 Centenary in Shreveport, S-H-R-E-V-E-P-O-R-T, Louisiana. The zip code is 71104. Again, 71104. So if you can, uh, friends, I tell you what, it would be great if we can get him on the board of the NRA. A lot of things will happen, believe me, if we can get him on there. Anyway. You know, it's important that we have a reliable gun, but you know what else? It's also important that we have a reliable and sharp knife. Now, we have discovered one of the neatest things, and we have a little knife sharpener here. This is called a pocket pal. It has uh, some little tungsten carbide inserts right here. And friends, let me tell you what, this thing will sharpen a knife like crazy. Uh, you can always have it with you because it has a little hole here to go on a keychain. Uh, you just slip it in your pocket. It's very thin and flat, but it does the same job as a much larger uh, knife sharpener. So let me show you how it works. And let me, let me also remind you that if you're a bow hunter, you can sharpen broadheads down to a razor sharp uh, uh, cutting edge with this little pocket pal. So all you have to do, and take a look at this, we'll open our got our buck knife here and all you have to do is put it on a surface like so and it needs to be a firm surface and uh, probably be better off the edge of this but we'll show you how it works and just pull the blade through the carbide inserts and the first couple of times you can feel it drag there you can feel it uh, literally sharpening that metal a couple of times with a little force and then seven or eight times just lightly across just like so seven or eight times or so. And friends, let me tell you what. This jewel will shave after being coming across on the, on the little pocket pal here. Now then, this is available through us here at the program, the pocket pal, call Bobby or Al at our 800 number, 1-800-SAVE-YOUR-GUN, 1-800-728-8486, and we're pricing this at $7.95 plus shipping and handling. So uh, this is, again, one of the neatest little things to come through here. This little pocket pal knife sharpener, $7.95. Call Bobby or Al, 1-800-SAVE-YOU-GUN, 1-800-728-8486 for the pocket pal. Well, friends, we hope that you're enjoying our program. We're certainly enjoying being here with you today. My esteemed colleague, Leroy Scott here, the good judge. And Hey, that's pretty good, a good judge. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And, uh, you know, we had a, a call. France, we have had thousands upon thousands upon thousands of phone calls into this program over, over the years, of course. And we've had, we could probably count all the anti-gun calls we've had probably on one hand, probably. But we did have one here, uh, oh, recently. Someone saw our program and said, saw a man sitting there with an assault gun. Well, well, if he's watching again today, sir, this is not an assault gun. It's a Colt Sporter semi-automatic rifle carbine, in fact. But uh, this man said there were too many guns in his neighborhood. He lived in a city somewhere. There were too many guns in his neighborhood. Well, and then he hung the phone up. Oh, well, you know what, friends, for people like that, or if you have a gun in your home you're nervous about, we're going to institute the Shoot and Show Adopt-A-Gun Program. <laughs> If you have an orphan gun in your home or, some, or somebody uh, next door or wherever else has a gun they don't want, uh, well, friends, let me tell you what. 
we have families waiting for your orphan guns. Believe me. <laughs> so you can call us if you have a gun you'd like uh, that's making you nervous or whatever else. Well, you can send it to our adopt. You can call us at our adopt a gun program, and we'll give you shipping instructions. And uh, I think that's a pretty good idea, especially uh, now we have a lot of families who are really interested in Colt pythons, uh, Colt sporters, uh, Smith and Weddle, uh, Smith and Weddle, Smith and Wesson uh, model 27s, model 29s, 45 automatics, uh, model 700 Remingtons, especially these. We really have homes M1A Springfields. M1 Garands. Now, we have a lot of homes that really would like to adopt those guns. So uh, we just think that's, you think that's a good idea, sir? Well, we've got homes that are willing to adopt almost any gun, Johnny, <laughs> as far as that goes. But, yeah, sure it is. Uh, if this joker that called you and said that he had too many guns in his neighborhood, we'll help him solve his problem. We sure All will. All you got to do is send them to us. SKSs, AKs, uh, whatever. Uh, I think that's good. So you can call us on our 800 number. And uh, we'll just try and work out our adopt-a-gun program. But you know, Johnny, that joker's in a minority. He is not just in a minority. He is in a vanishing minority. Uh, I want to talk about several things today. Uh, I didn't get my facts from the NRA this weekend. Should have. Instead, I got a letter from him, uh, dated June 14th, which seems to me to be... Uh, a little tardy getting here. And Tanya Matoska, who is the executive director of the Institute for Legislative Action, uh, has come on board. Welcome aboard, Tanya. Welcome. Uh, Fifteen years ago, I believe it was 17 years ago, I urged the NRA to become active in political matters. Uh, it was at a regional meeting. I said, quit reacting. Instead, get behind candidates. Find out who your candidates are. Support them. Get them in, in uh, legislative positions and in executive positions first, and then you won't have to worry about what kind of proposals they have. Well, you know, that's almost true, but it's not quite. But let me tell you what the NRA wants us to do. And this is true in every state in this nation. Uh, Encourage your family, your friends, fellow firearm owners to register to vote. If they're not registered to vote, offer to take them down to register to vote. Have a registration to vote party uh, with the uh, motor, motor voter registration laws that are in effect now. You just about register anywhere. Uh, you need to, to do this at home. You need to do it in your local gun shop your shooting ranges, your club meetings, your businesses, wherever you are. Uh, you might even want to think about becoming a voter registrar or maybe on the, on the uh, poll watchers. Uh, this is an important thing. It's a very, very important thing. You need to volunteer to help the campaign efforts of pro-gun candidates and quiz them heavily about what their position is. Uh, if you don't do anything else but talk to the people on your block, encourage them to vote. And if they're not going to vote favorable for, for gun owners, then encourage them to go fishing or go hunting. Or, or, <laughs> or well, Good they idea. They won't go hunting. Uh, <laughs> encourage them to, to take in an opera or, or, or do something. Do something that pleases them and keep them away from the polls. Uh, We've only got about 25% of the eligible people that, uh, that can vote or eligible to vote that do vote. Uh, maybe a little more than that in presidential elections, possibly 50%. But remember, that means 25% plus one, 26%, can control the election. Your vote is more important than it seems. In a presidential election within my memory, the results would have been changed by one vote per precinct throughout the nation. One vote per precinct throughout the nation. Uh, that is, of course, assuming that the vote was in the direction of the side that lost. Uh, that's, that's, that's important. Now, the NRA wants you to, uh, to communicate with them. They've got an 800 number. I'll get your pencil out, and I'll give you the 800 number in a, in, in a few minutes. This is particularly directed toward Louisiana voters. 
We have a primary on October 21st. That's an open primary. Uh, and uh, uh, if you're a Republican or Democrat or Independent or Perot-ite or whatever, you can still vote. Uh, we don't have separate primaries in Louisiana, at least for the present. Voter registration deadline is September 26th. That's in Louisiana now. We're talking about the Louisiana uh, legislative elections and the elections for statewide offices. Uh, the general election will be on November 16th. That's not but, what, uh, November 18th. That's just uh, four weeks after the primary. Voter registration deadline for that, for the uh, uh, general election is November, is October 24th. Well, that means between October 21st, October 24th, the primary and the deadline for voting for the general election, you got to get yourself down and get registered. It's easy to do it ahead of time. Just go ahead and do it. Uh, if you want to uh, change your registration, you can do it. If you're going to be out of town, you can vote absentee. You've got uh, between 12 and 6 days, that is starting 12 days before the primary or the election and ending 6 days before, you can appear at the registrar's office and you can vote, and you can vote absentee. I urge you, if you're going to be out of town, to do that. Or if you're going to go hunting, you can, uh, do it. Or if you're going to go fishing, or if you're going to go trap shooting, or, or whatever you're going to do, be sure to go down there in that period before, 6 days before, 12 days before to 6 days before, and appear at the registrar's office and vote. This is important. It is very important. Now, we think we've done a wonderful job in uh, electing the Republican Congress. Let me tell you, we've only done half a job, just half of it. Congress, I remember after the Civil War, I gave a talk once about the South after the Civil War. And I said that the halls of Congress were filled with sworn avengers. Well, let me tell you, the halls of Congress are still filled with sworn avengers, avengers against gun rights. Uh, the way I see this thing ha having happened, Oklahoma, the tragedy in Oklahoma, was not a was not doing of any conservative group or any right wing group. It was either a complete aberration or it was one that was carefully staged by, I hate to say governmental forces, but forces that are, that are in favor of more government power, because that's exactly what's happened. It's what has come about as a result of Oklahoma City. The anti-terrorism bill has preempted the discussion of Waco, has preempted the discussion of Ruby Ridge, Idaho. It has, taken, it has taken the debate off of gun freedom and put it back on gun control. Now, something's wrong with that. It's absolutely wrong with that. There's nothing, there's nothing in Waco, uh, there's nothing in uh, Oklahoma City that was directed by gun owners. Absolutely not. The Shooting Show will be right back after this break for your local cable company or TV station. Friends, to advertise on the shooting show, you can call Bobby or Al at 1-800-728-8486. Again, that's 1-800-728-8486. Now, let me tell you. Uh, I have a fact from uh, GOA, Gun Owners of America. Still a great organization, one you ought to join. 
Even if you don't join it, send them a, send them a buck, send them five dollars, ten dollars. They can use it. Uh, in response to GOA's alert on June 15th, callers blasted Representative Mike Flanagan, Republican of Illinois, for his vote in favor of Shermer's extremely broad cop killer bullet ban in the Judiciary Committee. This is a ban that would have taken care of almost every every rifle cartridge in the country. Yep. Uh, after receiving a lot of heated calls, Representative Flanagan made a rare procedural motion to reconsider the vote on the ammo ban and as a result a substitute was voted on and passed. Now this didn't do away with that provision. It simply appointed a committee to study the matter of quote cop killer bullets. You know I'm, I'm constrained to to ask you if you know what a committee is. I mean, if, if, no, if, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, belay that. To ask you what a camel is. You know what a camel is? Yes. What? A horse designed by a committee. A horse put together by a committee. That is so right. And we're going to have a committee now to study the bu the business of of the ammo ban, and of course that depends on on who appoints a committee. Well, anyhow, there's a lot of gun control in the anti-terrorism bill. Uh, the, it probably didn't come, come before the full House now until after the July 4th recess. But there are some serious problems, some very, very serious problems. Uh, the, uh, as an amendment to the bill defines, defines as a terrorist any person who uses a firearm with the intent to directly or indirectly endanger the safety of an individual or to cause substantial damage to property. Now listen to that. That's a terrorist. And you just don't know the, the power that this is putting in the hands of the executive about terrorists. Seize their bank accounts, close down their operation. Uh, all you have to do is to defend yourself with a firearm, and lo and behold, you become a terrorist. This whole anti-terrorism thing is nothing but a sham to give power to government, excess power to the government. Second, that bill imposes a mandatory minimum prison sentence on any person who has transferred a firearm having reasonable cause to believe that the firearm would be used in a crime of violence. Uh, and the term crime of violence is uh, de defined very broadly and to includes threatening to use force against property. That's a loaded gun appointed at the head of the American firearms industry. Uh, they're trying to put the firearms industry out of business. They'd like to put the firearms owners out of business. Uh, this, this new definition is just perfectly horrible. Uh, and guess who gets the enforcement powers under that? You know who, Johnny? Well, I'm afraid to ask, Judge. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms. Oh, boy. The, the gun owner's enemy. Uh, this is something that you need to do. We need to deluge Congress. This battle is not over. It's not over this year. It probably won't be over next year. As long as people like Sherma and Kennedy Feinstein. Feinstein. Add, add Ms. Boxer in oh, that yeah, too. Barbara Boxer, yes. Uh, and lots of others, as long as they're in Congress, you're going to find amendments being proposed to every bit of legislation that comes, that comes about. Uh, now, GOA is introducing a program to let you uh, send postcards. They'll pre-print your postcards. They'll give you a set of them, a set of 51 postcards for $6. That's for the first set. $4 for a second set and $2.50 for each additional. Buy a few sets, distribute them to your friends, sign them and mail them. Uh, if these things go to all of our congressmen, all of our senators, and the leaders of the Senate and the House who are in positions of power, and they realize, as they probably, probably, already should, the power of the gun owners of America, uh, not, not the organization gun owners of America, but the people gun owners of America, then we will get some of these things taken out of these bills, but you've always got to watch them, watch them all the time. You know, folks, what the judge is talking about, literally, 
is a fight for our very freedom in this country. This, these firearms are a small part about what this is about, but it is of huge importance. And you know, your figures early, we were talking about 25% of the voters vote. That means that less than 25% of the population controls the rest of the country. And I think it is outrageous that, that one, we've let this happen to us, and we have got to get control of, of these legislators. Well, for example, uh, House Resolution 1488, uh, that was a gun ban repeal. It's been weighted down with impossible amendments. One of them gives the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms much more authority and much greater jurisdiction. Under that amendment, merely brandishing a firearm to discourage an assailant could subject a person to the investigative jurisdiction of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and a 10-year mandatory minimum, minimum sentence. Uh, this, is, this is beyond comprehension. House Resolution 666, that's a bill that encourages the harassment of gun owners by removing the incentives for officers to obtain a warrant. I just wonder, haven't any of these people read the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution? Haven't any of the legislators who vote on these things read the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution? They don't care. Well, the, um, the amendment is there, and it's almost, non, it's almost un, unrepealable. Uh, the enforcement agents under that, under that provision will, quote, not have to go to the magistrate and get a warrant for anything. They can just go right in, bust down the doors, and go in and take the guns. That is so outrageous that it defies description. And let me tell you, these things are actually being proposed in your Congress, by your representatives, by your senators, and you can do something about it. Here's the 800 number for Gun Owners of America. 800-417-1486. You can order postcards that way. And to the NRA, they've got a number. It's 800-392-8683. 392-8683. Now, these are toll-free calls. You Don't be discouraged if you try to call and you can't get through. That's what I did today. I, I couldn't get through to GOA. The lines were busy. GOA is composed of a group of activists. That's right. And they do things. And when these faxes go out to GOA members or to G people on the GOA fax network, Congress is smothered with calls. As it should be. As it should be. As indeed it should be. Well, you know, let me mention something here, Judge. Uh, you see the New American commercials here on our program. And I believe the New American is the finest news magazine in the country today. I really believe it. If you want to know what is actually going on, you need to subscribe to the New American. Now, it comes twice monthly, and they're going to be giving this April 3rd, 1995, uh, a free copy of this comes with any new subscription. And it has coming your way, the United Nations, global government, and you. Now, friends, this is not a joke. This is something that these nuts are trying to force upon us. This one world, new world order, one world global government. Friends, we're not going to have it. We're not going to stand for it. Johnny, this is a case of giving power to government. And giving power to government also gives government the ability to, to become tyrannical. That is the very thing that has not happened in the United States as yet because the founders created a system of government that was so inefficient that nobody could take total control of it. But the whole idea of a New World Army or the uh, uh, United Nations peacekeeping force, they're doing exactly what the Russians wanted to do, uh, have done for years. They send the Eastern European troops to the Orient to enforce order, quote order, quote order, against the Oriental populations and bring Oriental troops into Eastern Europe to enforce uh, 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 their, their edicts on people that are not of the same racial and ethnic backgrounds. Well, Clinton's already tried that here, trying to bring, Roy, uh, bring Royal Hong Kong police forces 
into the United States for the U.S. government to use. We didn't need them, and it got taken out. That was in the crime bill. That was in the crime bill. It was indeed. They're already trying this. And if anybody says New World Order to you, you ought to slap them verbally, if no other way. Let them know immediately that this is something that is not in the best interest of this nation. Well said, sir. Now, friends, how would you like to have a boat that you could literally carry around in the trunk of your car? Well, that's possible now with the new briefcase boat. This has a tremendous amount of utility. You can stop on the side of the road and go duck hunting in a pond or in a, a small stream or a lake, whatever. You can even put a small a trolling motor on it. It has a duck blind type situation that goes over it in camouflage. Really such a neat setup. Now, this is available through us here at the program. It's $495 plus shipping and handling. Call us 1-800-SAVE-YOUR-GUN, 728-8486. Talk to Al or Bobby about it. They'd be glad to talk to you. The briefcase boat called a day. If you would like to advertise on the shooting show, you can call us at 1-800-SAVE-YOUR-GUN. That's 1-800-728-8486. Our staff will be very happy to talk to you. Well, friends, it's happened again. We've run out of time for today's program. From Kurt, the judge, myself, we want to thank everyone for being with us for today's program, and we look forward to seeing you on the next shooting show.